Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to Hearthstone. So, we have some daily quests to finish. Uh, last time we only got two, record, uh, two Paladin and Priest victories. This time, let's go with the Shame and Victories and see if we can get that done. Now, I'm living this, uh, live streaming this on April 9th, so... Uh, in the me in between each live stream, somebody asked me if I thought the update was good. I think it is pretty good. This is the one we're going to play. We're playing ranked, and that's uh, inherently going to make it more difficult to, vic to get victories. But I also have a bunch of news to talk about today, too, since the Journey to Nguru update had me skip news. So I have almost six days' worth of news on, on my whiteboard to talk about. Uh, I still desperately am trying to find a cheap teleprompter system that I I could use it, but I I can't even find the teleprompter mi mirror let alone the uh, a teleprompter foot pedal system which which is how they do it so uh, anytime you see like a, some of the presidential like giving a speech they've got kind of a sentence forward sentence back foot pedal going on or maybe they don't maybe for those people they they have some assistant there just listening directly to what they're saying and looking at the screen and moving it forward and then getting those little glass reflector teleprompters those things are like twelve hundred dollars but uh moving on. so instead of doing any of that i just have a dry erase whiteboard <laughs> that i use which is a lot cheaper and simpler all right, this one's gonna play for Crystal Cove. I'm not a huge fan of Crystal Cove as a quest. Some of these quests, I don't think would have been worth getting in the first place, but uh, I wish I had all the quest cards. Uh, and that's kind of the main problem with uh, Journey to and Guru's expansion to get back whether I think it's good, is that number one, I think every single player needs the quest cards. I think you just have to give that to everybody because this is a major new implementation. Oh, also, they need to support the idea of quest cards. So next expansion, every single character class should get a second quest card. At least one more. And one more would be fine. And it should just be handed to them too. And they shouldn't be legendary things. They should oh, be man. reward Gosh. things that you get. Uh, so that's a major problem. The elementals are, as as they thought that were added, are fine, but they don't really do anything special. And so because of that, I'm, I'm not super excited by them. Somebody asked me on the comments uh, of one of my videos what what do you think about an elemental deck? And I'm just like, I don't understand the elementals. The, the concept's there. I understand the concept. It's like, you play an elemental the previous turn, the, the elemental in the next turn will get some kind of bonus. But that some kind of bonus is never anything super amazing. And... Uh, and it doesn't kind of synergize to anything. There's there's no 10 mana or more card that says, for every elemental you played in the game, get plus one, plus one attack, which is what I think it needs. Or plus one, plus one health, which could you could do that too. Or you could do plus one, plus one attack and health. That's what plus one and plus one would mean. Uh, I'm, I'm stuttering accidentally here. Uh, or you could... Uh, or you could have it say for every elemental you've played previously, bring it back to life. Or you could have some spells that increases the attack or health or gives elementals taunt or charge or adapts them or, or something. Uh, there's just no synergy there. It's elementals... Are like dragons. In fact, they're 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 very much like dragons. Where dragons get a 
a thing that happens to them because you're holding another dragon. So if you're holding a dragon, gain plus one, plus one. If you're holding a dragon, restore one health to the hero. Uh, if you're holding a dragon, gain taunt. But there's no dragon at the end of this path that's a 10 mana or more that says uh, for every dragon you've played previously in the game, gain, gain health, gain, uh, gain uh, attack. There, there's not a dragon out there that's like a 25 mana cost dragon that goes down for every dragon you've played first. There's not a elemental character. Uh, there's not an elemental that uh, that that says for every elemental you've played previously in the game, that's going to uh, the the cost of that 25 mana elemental is cheaper and so there's just no real synergy there we got another comment how come my uh you're such low rank well because i haven't played any rank since the month started over and frankly because i kind of suck at hearthstone let's let's just be honest here uh my decks weren't great I hopefully with the new expansion my decks are better and, and I kind of feel like I might get a better uh, a better thing but when I'm playing Hearthstone I'm not a hundred percent here let's see if maybe we can get this this guy so here's the priest quest card that that you were just asking about the the person who was commenting was just asking about summon seven death death rattle minions and you get Amari, Warden of Hope. She's a 5 man, uh, 8 8 with taunt, and it sets your hero's health to 40. It's, it's not even that that cool of a card. Let's see, this Death Rattle is restore 4 health to your hero. Let's see, what do we want to do here? This, this. And because of this, I'm gonna do this. Job's done. And then turn. So yeah, I'm hopefully gonna get up higher in the rank, but also I don't have a huge motivation to get into the higher of the rank. Uh, honestly, if it's just gonna mean that it takes more time for me to get quests done, daily quests, daily challenges, then... I, I don't see that as an amazingly cool idea. Let's see. Let's see. Let's draw this. Draw a couple of cards. Like, like I, I sure, sure, I'd, I'd love to get to rank one legendary because at the end of the month you get more dust and gold and stuff but i've i've never gotten i think even past rank 16. uh and at best i was slowly getting to the point where i was uh where i was unlocking like rank 18 and that was it like, I was barely getting the rank 18. And that that was mostly on standard play, too. And uh, Part of that is paying attention. Part of that is, is, is covering news. This is more focused on blogging than you just sitting here and uh, playing the game. One of the things that I was noticing when I was watching Crip... Uh, Kriperian uh, play on Twitch last night for a few minutes. I barely spent any time on it at all. Uh, and is that he sits there and he goes quiet and he's doing it every single day for many, many hours. I don't even touch Hearthstone except for when I'm streaming going forward. Like, like there's no off-screen playtime. So going forward, if you... 
watch these as pre as recordings and or if you watch these as live streams and you catch all live streams that's 100 percent of all the time i i put in the hearthstone everything all my other time is focused around recording other games and having some variety here i think of my channel kind of like a tv station like abc cbs fox but for being a video game critic so the idea is to have different time slots have different types of programming get different people who are interested in different things and have some overlap there so people who like to watch my hearthstone live streams hopefully they will go Another back and watch my witcher try. 3 series hopefully they'll go check out some of my other series let's see that's ideally what would happen Right now on my channel, I have like over 4,000 videos. Let's see. Alright, the, the comments are always you need to go now, but we'll friend request you later. Fine. That, that's cool. I, that, that's a weird thing about people on the chat too. Is they're like, need to go now. It's like, well, from my perspective, if people don't comment, they they either left or they... They just don't have anything to go. It's, 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 uh, people need to realize that, like, I'm trying to stream to multiple, multiple people. So if one person leaves while every single viewer is important, it, the live streams aren't, aren't so centered around a single viewer that, like, uh, he says his name. Uh, I'm gonna accept friend requests from everybody, so I don't even I don't even need your your name. Uh, so that's that's fine. Uh, maybe in the future, if I if I start having a limited amount of things uh, of friends that I can have, that will become an issue. But right now, all friend requests are getting accepted. So if somebody sends me a friend request without ever commenting they're still going to get accepted the, the only thing that might become a problem is if people start chatting or or spamming like in the chat while i'm live streaming that might be an issue so i, I would ask that all comments stay in the youtube comments not don't try to comment here although it is possible that i might allow comments if you're actually playing me right there. If, some, if we're doing a friendly challenge, it, just because of delay reasons, I could see... Uh, I could see saying, well, that one person should comment me here. Uh, if we're trying to show off something or do something interesting. Let's see. Let's go ahead and attack here, and attack here, in the turn. Hmm. Alright, so moving on with the, the news, is that it would be great if by the end of this month we all rank rank like 10. That would be amazing. I, I'm, I'm not going to go crazy and expect to see a massively high rank there but if I got to rank 10 that would be amazing improvement and then it certainly would become a, a, an issue I also don't play rank that much that's another thing is that like if it comes down to victories I'd rather just play on casual and have a slightly higher chance of getting victories than uh, than try to get up higher on rank uh, but moving on, a company called Ska Studios, who actually made Salt and Sanctuary. Look at that. There's a, there's a nice win streak we could start getting. Uh, well, see, now the, the quest is done, so I, I have no reason to play as the shaman, so I need to change my cards. Let's go go to I suppose the rogue or warrior now uh, so Ska Studios before they made Salt and Sanctuary let's see pirates cry attack three attack 
uh, they made a couple of games that I swear gave me arthritis or made my arthritis hurt a lot more called Charlie Murder and The Dishwasher Dead Samurai and then I think the sequel slash remaster of that, The Dishwasher Vampire Smile. Uh, and so two of those three Bye games... Here are coming to PC pretty soon. Uh, I, I don't know why the Dishwasher Dead Samurai is not do. is not coming out to PC, though. Uh, these were originally Xbox 360, like, uh, I think, arcade games. So, right when they... When Microsoft was promoting their arcade games, small indie games before it turned into just these terrible like copyright infringing and stupid jokes um, joke games at the beginning there was this summer of arcade thing that they would do and I, I wonder if they still do that where for every week they would promote slash uh, slash sell Maybe even give away for free. I don't think you got them away, got them for free, but uh, maybe you did. I don't even remember. It's been so long. Uh, this guy's uh, And I remember playing the Dishwasher Dead Samurai, and it is a very high-paced, uh, action-focused. Uh, uh, press a lot of buttons really fast game and. Uh, I didn't get very far in it before it was I was just like like this is killing my thumb and frankly even now like as I'm covering uh, recording Borderlands that uh, pulling the trigger with my pointer finger to fire the gun uh, which you don't even really need to do is is becoming slightly problematic as far as uh, Uh, as a game, here we go. Uh, it's just hurting my fingers, so I don't know if I'm, I, if I'd ever, uh, I'd probably buy these games and never play them. In fact, frankly, I'd probably buy Salt and Sanctuary and never play it too, because that's supposed to be a 2D Dark Souls, and uh, frankly, at this point, anytime anything is called a Dark Souls style game, I, I, I don't even want to play it. Strange choice there. Let's see. Attack. Let's do this. And then this. And then attack here. And then this one. Uh, Amazon has agreed to refund up to $70 million worth of in app purchases made by kids. Which is kind of stupid, but I mean, because I'm pretty sure more than $70 million was done through in app purchases with the kids. Almost certainly they made uh, uh, they made more money than that. And so they got away with it, is, is what you, I guess, take from that. Let's go ahead and attack here. Uh, Gearboxes came out directly and said that the a Bullet Storm sequel made by people who can can fly will definitely probably could happen if the full clip edition uh, remaster sells well. So you know this is total BS and this isn't the first time Gearbox has done this uh, this is totally their MO as far as Gearbox and it's it's one of the many reasons why people don't like Gearbox is because so it's not because they options. always make terrible games although they're, they're running about 50-50 here like I'm playing Borderlands I'm loving Borderlands that, that there's nothing wrong with that but they also 
sometimes release slash publish games that in weird bad ways and honestly Bulletstorm sequel there's nothing wrong with the sequel it's just uh it's not worth the price that they're selling it for and because of that factor alone here we go that the, we already kind of know the the bullet storm sequel is not going to sell there's also problems with bullet storm it's got a childish dialogue and them adding uh, duke nukem into it is is ridiculously dumb because all they did is they changed the 3d model and had Duke Nukem say different lines around the lines of all the other characters. So all the other characters don't interact at all with Duke Nukem in the entire game, as far as I can tell. Uh, he's just there as if somebody had magically cut out the real main character, Bulletstorm, and pasted in Duke Nukem. And his lines, when he talks around the other characters' lines, aren't funny enough for that to, to to be worth doing or worth watching and so that whole pre-order DLC thing's not worth Mistakes it and definitely not worth the $50 they want right now for the game the, this game had it come out at $30 I would say it was slightly expensive but coming out at 50, it's just completely unacceptably expensive. And it's getting released at the wrong time. Twice Gearbox in a row now has released games in the wrong time. Battleborn got killed by Overwatch this by being released terrible. at the wrong time. Uh, if they were releasing Battleborn right now, it might actually have done a lot better. Particularly if they had just released it as a free-to-play, which is what it needs to be. Uh... Or, let's try this again, or if they had simply managed to get it out a few months before Battleborn uh, Overwatch, which frankly they needed to get it out probably six months or more before Overwatch and then it would have sold better to you. But this isn't the first time they've said, we will make a sequel if this sells well. It's like, and th this is no way for anybody ever to buy a game. It's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Our next one will be better. If you buy this Valera one. And if it sells enough, our next one will be better. Honor. Honestly, Once when you look at it back. from a different perspective, more than likely Gearbox is right in this short, in a similar weird way. More than likely People Can Fly is right. They probably don't have enough money to justify making a sequel to Bulletstorm. That's why Bulletstorm's so old and it's getting a remaster and there hasn't been a sequel up to this point. Do I really even want a Bulletstorm sequel? No. Like, maybe something in that universe with different characters, it would make some sense maybe then... But all Bulletstorm was was a Gears of War ripoff that was more childish in its antics with a better shooting system that, you know, honestly, Borderlands should have stolen. And I, I don't know if Bulletstorm came out after Borderlands 1 or what that, that prevented them from stealing more of those ideas. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if with this publishing deal if it turns out that a lot of the ideas that people can fly put in the bullet storm do end up in a borderlands 3 system mostly the style system the leash ability and the slide and kicking ability could all easily be seen in a borderlands 3 game um, but yeah there's never gonna be an update or a sequel it's just not gonna happen and trying to trick people into purchasing a game that's overpriced on promises is not good business like imagine you go into a mattress store and they say if you buy this bad mattress for way more than it's worth you buy this five thousand dollar mattress 
that's full of rocks. Th then next time we'll give you the top of the line foam mattress that with adjustable frames and all of that. It's like, no, nobody's gonna do that. And yet somehow in the video game industry, it kind of plays like this and tricks like this are at the very least slightly acceptable. Nobody calls them out as much as they should be. But that being said, Gearbox certainly did get called out for something. And this story is definitely full of twists and turns, so I'm not going to start it. Uh, but next time we'll talk about Gearbox partnering with GTA, then unpartnering with GTA, and then Total Biscuit causing Gearbox to unpartner with GTA through threatening a bullet boycott. Uh, and more and more of that. I didn't play this right at all. I should not have done that. But whatever. Uh, I will say Double Fine did this thing called Amnesia Fortnite where I think they're internal character, they're internal employees, but maybe not. Maybe just random people decided to pitch games, and then they put the pitches on YouTube, and uh, then they ask people to vote for it. So, if you're holding a dragon, summon 211 whelps. I am somehow holding a dragon. Interesting. Let's see, can we do anything here? Here we go. Job done. Play this on the ninth turn. I might actually win. Uh, some interesting game pitches there. Uh, I don't know who won, but also uh, Cal a couple of California people that were just like making some really crazy pro go girl power pitches and the one that certainly showed up on my feed even though they promoted everything and i want to be fair of that because to me it looked like double fine was particularly promoting certain ones and it wasn't they promoted them all they're all in the same playlist so so i can't really blame double fine for this but the one that came up on my feed i don't know why you twitter decided that was the one to show me uh and was one called Vagina Crisis, a period piece, which is a game uh, edu slash educational thing about a girl, 13 year old girl, having her first period, at which I'm like, gross. <laughs> and then there was one other when I was going on there that was, the picture was really just, it's a bunch of girls playing Dungeons and Dragons. And, uh, that, that's all it was. It's like, uh, I want to make a game where a bunch of girls play Dungeons and Dragons, and like, but only girls. And I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa. wait a minute. Can't we both? Both genders play Dungeons and Dragons? Can, couldn't we get to that, please? Already attacked. Uh, but apparently not in those pitches. And a lot of the other pitches, too, were kind of dumb. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's a great thing I would say you should go spend about 20 minutes since the pitches themselves are only about a minute long to see what it's like in the video game industry and just how often and how many pitches there there are uh, because like pitches are really a diamond dozen in the video game industry and most of them are, are terrible and that's certainly what you see in Amnesia Fortnite. Almost certainly none of those games that get pitched are going to even have a single element added to a future Double Fine game. If Double Fine is even ever going to make a future game and not just do remasters. But it's an interesting concept to look at too. Uh, 
the, the ironic thing is that I probably would play the, the period piece game just as a goof. <laughs> like, I have a really bad video out there that I totally messed up in recording in a, that's a similar game called How Do They Do It that I spotlighted and maybe if I ever cared enough I would go back and fix that and re-record it and try to get it on full screen instead of just the top left of the corner being like that but no nah. but that was totally a goof usually when I cover these these games that s center around sex or, or sexuality they, they are jokes Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. Stay tuned if you're watching live. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.